Hi, I'm Paul Stringfellow. Welcome to this series of videos where I'm going to share with you a tool that I've been using to help enterprises deal with one of the biggest challenges that they have today, and that is the management of their data. But before we start looking at tools and, and technologies, let's just take a moment to understand why data is such a big challenge for the enterprise. Well, today it's an increasingly large challenge, and that's mainly driven by the value that data has to any modern business. As many of you will know, it's something that we use to help make better decisions, but it's also the way that we deal with our partners, with our customers. It's the way we develop new products and services. Data has massive value to today's modern enterprise. And because data has such value, we're growing the data sets that we have. We're collecting data in more ways from more devices and putting it into more repositories. And because our data sets are growing so large, that gives us a problem around data management. How do we manage these multiple repositories? How do we understand the information that we've got? And that's before we get into the three priorities that most enterprises have when it comes to talking about their data. Is our data secure? Are we making sure we are securing it as we need to as an enterprise? Because losing data in today's enterprise is just not acceptable. Are we then making sure that our data is compliant? Are we following our business policies and procedures? Are we meeting our regulatory requirements? And then of course we're governing the use of our data. Do we only have the data that we should have? Or are we only keeping it for as long as we should keep it? So how do businesses achieve better control of their data and manage these data sets, these important data assets better? Well, for me, there's three areas that a business should concentrate on. Firstly, we should know our data. Now, for me, this is the five W's of data. Who's using our data? When are they using it? Why are they using it? What does it contain and where is it stored? And then we should understand how we protect our data. And this is not just about securing our data, but also making sure that our data is always available and recoverable if we need it to be. And then, of course, as we've already touched on, governing the use of our data to make sure that we're only using the data that we should have. We're only keeping it for as long as we should have. And we're following the rules and regulations of our business and our external regulatory requirements. And then businesses who do that, well, that allows them to better optimize their use of data. It allows them to save money in the way they manage and store their data. And by saving money, they also increase the value of the data and information that they hold. And then by doing that, that allows them to build better security models around that information and to ensure that their information and data is used in a compliant fashion. But surely all businesses are doing that. Well, one of the challenges that I've seen that the more I work with enterprises is it's not quite that straightforward because a lot of the tools that we need to put in place to deliver this improvement around knowing our data, protecting it and governing it are complicated. They're difficult to manage they're difficult to install and they can be very expensive. So what I want to share with you is a tool that I've been using over the last six months or so that addresses a lot of these problems and addresses it in a straightforward, easy to run way and a pretty cost effective way as well. And that's Cloud Data Center, a product from NetApp. Now you'll probably be thinking, NetApp, aren't they a storage company? What on earth do they know about this space? But of course, NetApp over the last five years or so have been building an increasingly impressive set of tools to help manage and give better insight into data and how we use it and whether that's data on premises whether that data's in the cloud or whether that data is spread across all of those areas these tools have been very impressive and cloud data sense is one of those now of course you might be watching this and thinking well i'm not a netapp customer i don't use on tap i've got no interest in being a netapp customer and that really doesn't matter cloud data sense is not about netapp customers necessarily this is a tool that can be used across all kinds of data repositories in all types of organizations so over these videos, I'm going to share with you one of the things that's really impressed me about Cloud Data Sense and certainly has impressed many of the enterprises that I've worked with with this, with this tool. And that's how easy it is to install, how simple it is to use, how effective and powerful the management interface is in providing important information about our data. And of course, how cost effective it is for a lot of those organizations. So before we get into the how to videos of how we're going to use data sense to make sense of your data, let's first take a moment just to have a look at how data sense is architected and what it looks like and why it's so easy to deploy. So firstly, data sense is made up of two virtual machines. These virtual machines can be stored on premises or in a public cloud, as is shown here, or can be a hybrid of both with uh, a little bit in the cloud and a little bit on premises. And as we talked about earlier, data sense is not looking about just looking at NetApp data. So as we can see here, once we have our virtual machines deployed, we can connect our data sense infrastructure to a multitude of different data repositories. Of course, yes, NetApp's own repositories are included with ONTAP and uh, Storage Grid, but so are a wider ra range of uh, repositories such as Microsoft SaaS services, 
if you can see OneDrive and 365 on here, um, as are modern databases and traditional databases, and of course object storage buckets, including Amazon S3 and Azure Blob, and with a whole bunch more data repositories continually being added. And then so once we've got those uh, data repositories scanned, how do we then look at DataSense to make sense of that data? Well, you can see here that if you have invested in the broader NetApp ecosystem, then DataSense can plug into some of those NetApp endpoints. And if you haven't, don't worry, we can use, uh, and that's what we're going to concentrate on in the video, in fact, we can use a good intuitive GUI to help us make sense of our data, run reports and better manage our, our data infrastructure. So what are we going to be covering over this series of videos? Well, there's a bunch of areas that we're going to look at. We're going to show you some videos on how to install DataSense to show you how easy that is to get up and running. We're then going to show you how to get started with DataSense, how to get it to scan your data repositories and start to build some level of insight into the way that your data operates. And then, of course, we're going to show you, once we've got that data together, how we can use that to better secure, manage, govern and optimise our data. So I hope you'll stick with me and you'll find these videos useful. And of course, I look forward to your feedback. And if you do have questions, of course, you can contact me through any of the normal social media channels, as well as by leaving comments here on the video. So stick with us as we jump into the series of how to use DataSense to make more sense of your data.